Uh, hi folks, this is the first of the three video sectors that I'm going to post because of the lecture that I missed uh, or I will miss on Thursday. Uh, uh, it deals with, at least the first video deals with uh, chapter 6, which is a C-clamp shown here. And uh, the top hole of the C-clamp is entirely clamped. The inside for, say, face is entirely clamped. And this uh, rectangular bottom uh, face is being uh, given a, is given a downward displacement of a thousand, thousandths of an inch. Uh, now, this problem does have a plane of symmetry, so let me try to sketch the plane of symmetry for you. Uh, if I looked at the C clamp like this, and I have a coordinate system here, the YZ is obviously a plane of symmetry. Therefore, I need to model only half of this, and uh, uh, I get the same information instead of modeling the entire, uh, the entire piece, half of it, okay? And in fact, in the second video clip, I will do it uh, with the plane of symmetry. In the book, uh, no plane of symmetry is used. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do this thing in Katia. However, I do have to point out that uh, uh, I will ignore the dimensions uh, in the book. I just have a rough idea. have a rough idea of what the size is, but that's about it. So let's start with a uh, with a, a part fire, and uh, on this vertical uh, uh, vertical face, I will draw the cross section of the C clamp. So let's do it like this. Okay. I think I'll do it, although this may not be entirely symmetric, however, we can do a cleanup here. So uh, this line, control that line, control the middle axis. We're going to make them uh, use symmetry here. Okay. Uh, this line, control the bottom line, control the middle axis. Once again, you make it symmetric, and uh, because of that, these radii are going, to, these circles are going to be tangent. Good. Now, I also want to have a rough idea of. Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure if these are entirely concentric, so let's try to do that. This line, and this circle, and that circle. Why don't we make them concentric? But they don't look concentric to me. Okay, now they are probably. Yeah, good. All right, so uh, let me dimension one of these sides so that at least I have an idea of what the sizes I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with. This is about four inches, but four and a half. So, oops, wait a minute, let's go back there. We need a hole there, so why don't we draw a circle? So let's make a circle here. Eventually, the inside face of this is going to be entirely cut. Exit, and then pad it. Now, I'm going to do a... a a mirror extent because later on in the second video clip I'm going to cut this thing with uh, this middle plane to use 70 planes. All right, uh, let's make this thing out of uh, steel. So apply material, metal, let's go and apply steel here. There we are. And we're pretty much done. So let's go to analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. And we're doing the static analysis. Let me change the rendering here so that you can see it better. Now, notice that uh, well, probably based on uh, a little bit of common sense and some of the stuff that you may have seen in strength of material and stress analysis, you know that there's going to be big stresses around the bend, okay? In this area, in this bend area, you're going to have high, high stresses. Uh, not only high stresses, but stresses that are changing very rapidly. So this is where I actually need a finer mesh. Uh, Instead of making the mesh small everywhere, what I can do is make a small mesh in this area. So let me actually remind you how to do that. Although in the book, uh, uh, this meshing, mesh deformment is not done in this chapter, but uh, it doesn't matter really. We can see how it's uh, carried out. Okay, so where is the, uh, where is my, uh, I'm looking for a toolbar which says model manager, I believe. Uh, but can I find it here? I can't find it. Why don't I reset the toolbar so that uh, 
I can find, oh, is this the one? No. So tools, let's say go ahead, tools, customize, uh, toolbars, I'm going to restore all, and I'm going to restore position. Okay, so the particular toolbar that I was looking for, and I couldn't find it, is this actually. So it says that uh, model manager. So if you expand this particular uh, sub, uh, sub toolbar, it says local mesh size. So I'm going to select that to support this area. Notice that it did put a fine element a smaller element here, but if I want to make this thing bigger, I can make it 0.2 under my control. Okay, so if we say uh, show me the mesh, what is that you're going to have a finer mesh in the bend area and uh, of course the original mesh in this section. All right, so let me deactivate this mesh and let's proceed with the rest of the problem. First of all, uh, the inside of this hole is entirely clamped, so let's get the restraint toolbar out. There it is. So clamp this entire inside face, and you can see that it is clamped. See that? Right there. Okay. Now, I also want to give this face a downward displacement. The only th All the problems that we have, we have done so far, it involves zero displacement. In Katia, if you want to apply a downward, uh, a, a displacement, a non-zero displacement, or an enforced displacement, it involves two steps. First, you have to give it a zero displacement in the direction that you want, and then you can change it. So in order to apply zero displacement, we say user define a global coordinate system on that face in the direction Z. We don't want this thing to be zero. We want it to be a thousandth of an inch. However, first we have to make it zero, and then we can change it. So there it is. And then uh, you look at the loads toolbar. These you are familiar with. For example, there is pressure, there is force, there is acceleration. This one we have, we have not used before. This one says enforce displacement. So you click on it, and then it says, what is the restraint that you want to change? The restraint that I want to change is exactly the one that I just put in there right now. Well, I just noticed that, by the way, there is a 0 0.079 inches there, so I don't know where that's coming from. So uh, let me cancel that. Let me, let's me let try it again. So enforce displacement. Let me change this thing to zero. It's staying there from uh, what I've done things in the past. So uh, let me also make this thing zero. So the restraint that I want to change is this. And by how much, I'm going to give it a thousandth of an inch with a minus sign, of course. Uh, in the Z direction, and OK. And now we can solve the problem. So remember, this is a two-step process. Where is our calculator? OK, there's the compute uh, icon. You run it, and there it is. First, uh, look at the uh, deformation. That doesn't surprise you, because if, if the bottom hole is clamped, and you're moving this face down by thousands of an inch, the response of the C clamp is going to be something like this. Okay. Now, if you want to, if you want to look at the stress distribution, one needs a stress distribution right there. And this is what we expect that we have a big stress in this area. Now, notice that the elements are not fine enough because this is patchy. Okay. Now, one option is to make the element smaller in that area. So let's make it 0.01 instead of 0.07. Did I do that? Uh, 0.01. Okay. Well, why don't we run it and see what happens? But I didn't like that patchy stuff there. Let's see now. Stress, 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 one needs it. Uh, still, maybe I didn't change this, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, there's a warning here, that's okay. Let's make it even smaller. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to change this smaller. Point, sorry, point uh, oh one. Okay, let's make it a lot smaller and run it now. It's so small that you can't even see it. 
I'm sure that patchiness is going to go away at, at some cost, of course. The cost is a longer computation time. All right, let's see. The alternative would have been using a better element, namely quadratic element or parabolic element. Unfortunately, on, on this laptop, I can't display the stresses correctly. That's okay. This is very small in that section. It's basically killing it. Fly with a cannon. But anyway, let's let's find out. It's going to be done in a minute or so. Okay, let's see. Well, that's a big CPU, CPU time. So uh, hopefully it won't take more than a couple of minutes. It was a bad idea to go that small of an element in that section because, as you can see, it's taking some time. <laughs> now, when I'm done with this, uh, when the stresses look reasonable as far as the, the pattern is concerned, then I'm going to find the total force needed to cause that displacement. Okay, and in the next video segment, I'm going to repeat this whole problem, except that I will be using planar symmetry to reduce it. Okay, this is done. So let's look at the stress now. Um, I don't want to see any patchy stuff there. Good. See, it's right there. Now, I see some problems here, and uh, this has to do with my graphics card, I'm sure. When you, when you, when you do that, this is not going to happen. Uh, let me see. Uh, see, uh, I don't like the way these things grow, but I got rid of the patchiness. This has to do with my... Uh, Graphics card issues when you do this thing in class or in the lab, you're not going to see that, but you can see all that patchy stuff is going to be is gone. Now, uh, let's see. Let me deactivate this plot. All right. Suppose you want to know how much force is needed to give that entire face a thousandth of an inch downward displacement. In order to do that, you have to go to sensor, right click, uh, create resultant sensor, reaction sensor. And then it says, what is the sensor, or what is the restraint that you want to select? This is the restraint that I want to select. This was the, you remember I, I, made, I made this thing zero first and then I changed it right there. See that? I click on it and then I have to say, Update result. Right now, it gives you no numbers. Update results. There it is. And notice that it says you need about six, roughly seven pounds, 6.7 pounds downward force. So this is how you calculate the force in uh, CATIA. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop this here. I'm going to go and do a second video clip. Actually, you know what? Why don't we all do it right here? I think we can we can handle that. So we say, okay. So let me go to my part. There it is. Instead of making a second segment, I'll, I'll do it right here. Uh, then I'm going to uh, cut this thing into half. And it doesn't matter which piece you pick. There we are. So on this face, I have to put a surface slider, okay? So this is half of the model. Let's go to analysis. Put a surface slider here. Where is the, uh, where are the, this 
space. How come I cannot find my restraints toolbar? Okay, I uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe I should do a second video clip because this is uh, this is chewing up on time. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna stop it here. We'll move on.